Hello everyone. I welcome you all to this wonderful course on database management systems. Before we start the session, let's see a quote by Alan Cowen. Do not wait until conditions are perfect to begin. Beginning makes the conditions perfect. With this wonderful quote, let's begin this journey with the introduction. Before we step into the introduction to the subject, I just wanted to give an analogy to understand the significance of having DBMS in our day-to-day -day activities. Just assume I am owning a manufacturing company where I manufacture pens and pencils. Do you guys think that manufacturing alone enough without storing the data about the manufactured items? I would say no. Just manufacturing alone is not sufficient. We need to maintain the complete database of all the manufactured items and not only this, we are also required to maintain many more data. Why it is so? Let's take this pencil as an example. Once this pencil is manufactured, the details such as the length of the pencil, the color of the pencil, the date of manufacturing of this pencil, the price of the pencil, the model of this pencil, QR code, barcode, batch, location and other details have to be stored in the database. Why do we need to store all this information in the database? Say here we are storing the length, the color, the date of manufacturing, price, model, QR code, barcode, all the required data we are storing. Why do we need to store all these data permanently? Because data is a precious thing and will last longer than the system themselves. And also, in today's world, data is the new science. So from this, what we are understanding is, I am the manufacturing company owner and I am producing pens and pencils and I am storing all the information about the manufactured items in my database. Let's assume one of my customers has raised a complaint about one manufactured item. It may be a pen or a pencil. As the owner, it's my ultimate responsibility to look into the customer complaint because customers are the kings of any business. For example, let's assume I am collecting the barcode or the QR code of the faulty pen or pencil. Once the QR code or the barcode of the faulty pen or pencil is collected, using these data, we can find out what has gone wrong with the manufactured item and this is possible only when we store all the information in our database. Do you think it is ridiculous that customer is complaining about a low cost item? No, certainly it is not a ridiculous thing because customers are not only customers, they are the actual consumers of the product and they have all rights to express their satisfaction, appreciation, give feedbacks, give suggestions and even complaints. If a complaint is received about a particular item, then it's my responsibility as the owner to also check the whole batch or the particular date of manufacturing for further analysis to know only one item is faulty or the whole batch is faulty. Why the manufacturers need to do this? Because they need to sustain in the market and grow well in the market. And not only that, to be involved in continuous improvement, to file taxes regularly and they need to be transparent. When they will be transparent? When all the data about the manufactured item is stored permanently. Only then they will be accountable. So I mean to say, if we want to be transparent and accountable, all data must be well documented. To be precise, all data must be well maintained in a database like this. In this analogy, the data that we maintain includes not only the manufactured items, but also the employee or the HR details, the accounts, finance, the research and development details, the complaints and redressal details, the logistics details, sales and many more. And storing all these data is strongly recommended and where the organization is going to store. Is it going to store in the files? No, it's going to store all the data in a database like this. Why do we need to store the data in the database like this? And that's why we are here in this subject, the database management system. Be it any industry or organization, databases are inevitable. Trust me guys, whether it is a manufacturing company or an hospital environment, a school or an university, banking environment, airline, supermarket, insurance and whatnot, databases are inevitable. So from this what we understood, all the data must be stored in the database permanently about all the manufactured details. In addition, we need to maintain all the data possible to be transparent and accountable.
So far we have seen an analogy to understand the importance of having DBMS in our day to day activities. Let's now see the target audience of this course. To whom this course is actually intended to? This course is actually intended to the UG students. If you are an aspirant undergoing competitive exams like GATE, ISRO or any other competitive examinations, then you are in the right place. If you want to demystify the database technologies and jargons used in the database world, welcome to this playlist. And in this contemporary world, we have the requirement for data analyst and business analyst for which database knowledge is very much essential. We have just seen the target audience. Let's now see the syllabus of this course. In this subject, we are going to see 14 chapters. Chapter number one is introduction to the relational database management system, simply RDBMS. In second chapter, we will be focusing on the relational database. In third chapter, we will be focusing on database design and the entity relationship model, simply called as ER model. In the fourth chapter, we will be focusing on introduction to the structured query language SQL, which is one of the popular database languages. And in chapter four, we will be dealing about the basics of SQL. In chapter five, we will be focusing on the advanced SQL features like the procedures, triggers, functions, etc. In chapter 6, we will be focusing on the formal relational query languages, the tuple relational calculus and the domain relational calculus. We will also be focusing on the relational algebra. In chapter 7, we will be focusing on the normalization and the various normal forms with the dependencies, the functional dependency, the full functional dependency, partial dependency, transitive dependency, joint dependency, multi-value dependency and many more with relevant examples. And in chapter 8, we will be focusing on storage and file structures because databases directly deals with the storage of data. So we are required to know the basics behind the storage and the file structure. In order to improve the performance of the database, we need chapter number 9, which is indexing and hashing. And chapter number 10 deals with query processing and query optimization. We know databases are going to respond to the queries that we supply. So we need to process the query and we need to optimize the query in order to achieve better performance and efficiency. Chapter number 11 deals with the transactions and concurrency control. Chapter number 12, we will be dealing about the database system architectures, which includes the distributed database architecture, the parallel databases, etc. And chapter number 13, we will be seeing the introduction to the data warehousing and data mining techniques. And then we will be concluding the subject with the last chapter, the 14th chapter, XML and advanced databases. We are done with the syllabus of DBMS. Let's now see the scope. You may be asking me, what's the use of studying this subject? This subject is very, very important because in every organization which uses database, there is a key responsible designation, the database administrators, simply called as DBAs. He is the one who has the complete privilege over the complete database. If you want to become a database administrator, then obviously we need the subject database management system. And already mentioned, we have data analyst and business analyst job opportunities as well. And if you study DBMS, then this is going to be the basics for acquiring the job in the data analysis or business analysis market. And not only that, industries are nowadays looking for employees who are full stack developers. They are not going to deal with only the front end development activities. I mean the user or the web interface development. The developers are also expected to have the back end knowledge where databases are the back end. As mentioned, industries are expecting full stack developers. And that's why it has become mandatory to learn database management system. And finally, if you want to become a database tester or software tester or penetration tester, simply pen testers, then databases are very much important. I hope now you understood the significance of having DBMS in our day to day activities. So with the fingers crossed, let's see about database management system elaborately with the formal definition in the next lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and thank you for watching.